one or two. I don't have to. Hello, and welcome to the ride. I see you're into the hear no evil, see no evil philosophy of life. That should serve you very well down on the censorship floor. How many of you are there? Three. Thank you. Three. How many questions would you like to play? Seven? Thirteen? Okay. Great. Player one, go ahead and type in your name. Perfect. Thank you. What about your name, player two? Very good. Now, please show us how you spell your... Thank you very much. Here are the keys you will be using to buzz in. And now, it's time for the best part of the ride. Remember, you're always getting closer to the bottom. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. You don't know Jack. The ride is sponsored by the Backwards Christian Lyrics Coalition. We'll find a satanic reference in your children's music, whether it's there or not. And now, here's your host, Cookie. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Just a word of warning, I'm not going to censor myself here, so you might want to cover your own eyes and ears, okay? <laughs> Okay, first off, got to give you your screws. Here's a bunch for all three of you. Now listen up, and I'm going to tell you why I'm passing these out. The first time a question comes up that you think might be on the difficult side, buzz in immediately and start pounding on the S key. That's S for screws. You're going to be shooting these puppies into the screen, totally annihilating the question and answers. Then you're going to make your opponent answer the question whether they can read any of it or not. So if you're not the one pounding on the S key, you better be trying to read everything fast before it's gone. And that's Flackjack. <laughs> All right, it's time to learn the seven naughty words, because we're taking on censorship. It's up to you, player three. Hit your buzzer to select a value. Okay, you got something. Here's what we're looking at. Censorship. More like censor You ready? Let's go. If today's censors had the same job duties as the first Roman censors, which of these player two? What are you doing? Keep wailing on the S key! Player two, who do you want to screw? Okay, player one, you've been screwed. Which one's it gonna be? One, two, three, or four? Three, huh? All right. The Smothers Brothers? I think Mom always liked right answers better. <laughs> player two, player three. Up to you, player three. Jimmy Morrison, put that away or I'll have to take it away from you. <laughs> Make your move, please. 42, it's you. 41, 42, how does she do that? Uh, I mean, that, that, that's disgusting, don't look! The original censors took census, which means they counted things, and they took a break to read the articles. Player 2, Hitman! <laughs> the category is... Keep your censorship off my private parts. You know, political correctness has gotten way out of hand. There's even a human muscle named the PC muscle. If you're having problems with your PC muscle, what's the best PC term to use in Player 3, do it. <laughs> player 1, Player 2, who won? Player 1. No, this would be the group of muscles known as teenage boys. Balls and take a shot, play. You're an early challenged. Wow, looks like you're quite the cunning linguist. The PC muscle, or the pubococcygeal muscle, controls the flow of urine from the bladder and contributes to greater sexual pleasure in women, without offending anyone at all. Okay, player two, what's this one gonna be worth? We're calling this one... Censorship and Hardwood. Get your buzzer finger ready, here we go. 
If you tie a blue ribbon around the old oak tree, what cause are you supporting? Freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of expression. Don't stop with the SK, keep doing it! Oh, player one, who's getting s- Well, player two, you got a one in four chance of unscrewing yourself. Luck. Riddle number one. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> player one, pl player three, make it happen. North American Man-Boy Love Association? Uh, that's another kind of old oak tree. <laughs> player one, you can take it. All yours, player. <laughs> right, the one remaining answer is the one you should have picked. Very good. The Blue Ribbon Campaign is for free speech online. You should consider publishing photos of your oak tree on your homepage, because none of the online freaks will ever go outside to see it. Okay, player one, pick a winner. Okay, give it up for... I'll wash your thesaurus out with soap. Alright, get ready to buzz. 4733 is the big number on this question. Which of these is not a dirty word? Slatternly, abluted, bedraggled, or squalid? <laughs> player three, who do you want? You gotta answer it, player two. One, two, three, or four. Two, all right, let's check it out. Abluted means washed clean. No, it's not really dirty. Unless you say something is f***ing abluted. Player three, when you can't successfully screw someone else, you end up screwing yourself. <laughs> All right, player two, buzz in, give us a value. Good pick, player two. Player one, player three, step aside. Player two, it's dis or dat time. And this dis or dat question's category is... I see no evil, but I can smell it a mile away. Okay, I'm gonna list off seven people, and for each one, I want you to tell me if they're... Someone who sees no evil, someone who hears no evil, or someone who neither sees nor hears evil. As each one comes up, if it's someone who just sees no evil, press 1. If it's someone who just hears no evil, press 2. Press 3 if it's both. If you're kind of clueless, hit 4. You're gonna get some money for each right answer. And you're gonna lose some for each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. Okay, you have 30 seconds to get all of them. And keep an eye on the wire. When it fills up, you're done. Let's do it. Stevie Wonder sees no evil, hears no evil, or both! Marley Matlin! If you not... Helen Keller! Oedipus! Hey, you stiff! Ray Jones! Ludwig von Beethoven! Damn, time's up! Now then, I gotta deduct for each one you didn't answer. Well, that's not a total loss. Let's add the goods to your score. Player two's our leader. Okay, here we go. Player one, hit your buzzer and select the Here's your category. Tipper Gore. And now, the question. Say Tipper Gore treats her husband Al to a $50 dinner. If Tipper Gore is a good tipper, what is the smallest amount she should leave as a tip? $5, $7.50, $8.75, or $10? Player 2, it's yours! $7.50? Hmm. Yep, yeah, that'd be the customary 15% tip. Which leaves her and Al just enough money to buy a few Two Life Crew albums to burn when they get home. Player two, what's this one gonna be worth? Hit your buzzer and tell us. I like to call this category... I understand moral, but what's turpitude? You know that song by Ice-T called Cop... C hey, lady, you, you can't come in here. What are you do? Hey, don't put... Wh what are you... Ow! Cut!
covered in stickers. Here, look at this. Ow, my short hairs. <clears throat> Parental advisory explicit lyrics. Who's going around slapping these stickers? Player one. Now, the FCC would come in if I got a radio show, but why would I want to hide this bod from my fans? Player, player two, grab. Player three, make it happen. Good Tipper Gore and the Parents Music Resource Center campaign for the little warning labels on albums. And I have half a mind to take this sticker and shove it up the ass of those mother goody goody no good have nothing better to do head moral majority monkey suckers with a frozen boot. Now there's an explicit warning. Player three, it's all on your. Uh, may I say zoinks? Here's the category. You have the right to remain silent and minty. Let's get go. What issue would Scope's monkey trial most likely Player one, hit it. The original Scopes Monkey Trial took place when enlightened Tennesseans jailed biology teacher John Scopes for teaching evolution. Apparently, creationists also believe that fresh breath is an act of God. Player one, buzz in and choose a value for us. Coming up. My fellow congressmen, try the veal. Okay, play ball. Considering the specific issue to which congressional gag rules pertained, which of these gag artists' acts would be censored? Rip Taylor organizing a union, Henny Youngman petitioning against slavery, Milton Burrow lobbying for Medicare, or Red Skelton dodging the draft? Nobody's going for it? Why so chicken, player two? You've got cash to spare. A hey, audience, what do you think? Don't be a man! Take a shot, player two. I bet Red's big baggy clown pants did get a bit drafty. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at the right answer. Until they were deemed unconstitutional, gag rules in the House of Representatives prevented members from considering anti-slavery petitions. Okay, player three, hit your buzzer. Let's find out how much this one's gonna be. It's dead, it's disgusting, it's roadkill. Okay, let me explain how this game works. You're gonna see different pairs that are somehow related. And you're gonna see a series of items that may or may not connect the pair. Buzz in if you think an item correctly joins the pair. There's a thousand bucks in it for you if you're right, but beware, you're gonna lose a grand every time you're wrong. And we're gonna wrap it all up with a final bonus round worth some extra cash. Pay attention to all the correct answers and you might have a shot at the bonus. You got that? Good, let's motor. An essay, in flanker plastic bag. What unites these two? Turns into diamonds and blank miner's daughter. Alright, let's 
go for the bonus. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all the FCC seven dirty words? Player starting materials. Elements of the periodic table. Tennis terms. Public utilities. NWA album titles. Player starting materials. That's the ticket, player one. Everything you need to burn a bunch of bucks. Player two, you got the lead. Player one, you have the honors. Your category is... Comstocks and bondage. Here's the question. If you don't put much stock in the Comstock law, what will you probably do? Stage pornographic performance art, take pornographic photos of yourself, publish porn... Up to you, player. I know, you only read them for the articles. Also known as the Federal Anti-Obscenity Act, the Comstock Law bans the mailing of indecent materials. You know, it was, uh, it was just too distracting for the postal carriers. Player 3. Okay, give it up for... Low prices every day. Here we go. Where is Walmart head... Player 3, do it. Bentonville, Arkansas. Yep, that'd be Bentonville, all right. Right there in Arkansas. Player three selected. Welcome to the Jack Attack. I'm gonna be throwing a bunch of words up on the screen. Buzz in when you see two items on the screen that match. Each time you're right, you make money. Each time you're wrong, you lose it. Now here's the thing. Not any two items that go together are necessarily a match. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Sensory overload. And remember, the match has to fit the clue. Alright, good luck. you, sort of, not really. Tickets for her and a friend to a Spice Girls concert, $80. An autographed jersey of his favorite athlete, $240. The latest video game system, $150. Surveillance photos of their mom's new boyfriend with another woman, $400. Every other weekend of your children's undying love, priceless. Money can't buy your kids love, but with Platinum Credit Master, you can charge it. In other news, three out of five celebrities agree that war is bad. Learn more tonight. I don't know how we're going to afford Dad's funeral and serve finger sandwiches afterwards. We were able to pay for the casket and the headstone, 
But now I can't afford to make a casserole for after the services. Sound familiar? Afraid one day you'll be stuck serving cheese and crackers to a room of hungry mourners? Well, we understand your pain and embarrassment, and we're here to help. We're Azrael and Sons Funeral Homes and Pizza Parlors. I mean, let's face it, when someone dies, the rest of us eat. And at Azrael and Sons, we're here to put all your mourning and munching worries to rest. Our funeral directors have 30 years of experience in funeral arrangements. And our pizza chefs have won over 200 taste test competitions. You get the room, the casket, our 30 years of experience, and your choice of deep dish or thin crust all for one low price. So remember, in your time of sorrow and hunger, Asriel and Sons Funeral Homes and Pizza Parlors. Asriel and Sons, you kill them, we'll feed them. Hey, Aunt Shannon, I just found a pork shoulder underneath that tree. Well, ain't you the lucky one. Here at Aunt Shannon's Meat Pickers Farm, we grow only the freshest kinds of meat. Hey, Aunt Shannon, I just pulled this leg of lamb out of the dead pile. It's still got wool on it and everything. Looks like someone's getting a new pair of mittens and a full belly. Bring the family and spend the day. Aunt Shannon, I'm going to pick my dinner right out of the cow tank. Which one you going to eat? That one over there with the big rubber band around his horns. He's a big one. Come on down to Aunt Shannon's Meat Pickers Farm right next door to the AgriChem Lab. I hope to meet you soon. <laughs> Time now for a page from the success journey with motivational speaker and full-time dreamer, Dr. Harvey Bass. Let me tell you the story of a small farm boy from Alaska. He grew up in poverty, often cold, often hungry, many times forced to eat his own hair for sustenance. His father, a proud man, eked out a living raising caribou and selling their hooves to be made into pencil erasers. The father expected his son to take over the family business. Well, this bright, ambitious boy had a different idea. He had what I like to call a dream. The boy at the tender age of 12 rented a car and drove from Alaska to a small island off the coast of Florida. There, he fulfilled his dream of growing a beard, smoking big cigars, and talking in a funny accent. Yes, that man is better known to you and me as billionaire entrepreneur and respected world leader, Wilford Brimley. This has been a page from the success journey with Dr. Harvey Bass. Hey, what's the matter, Jimbo? Uh, I couldn't afford to keep my cell phone. Now driving without being on the phone feels... Weird. <laughs> Have to pay attention to the road, huh? Yeah. Try this. What's in the bag? It's a cell phone substitute. Put it on. <laughs> I can't see anything with these blinders on. No. Yeah. I see. It also comes with a five-year-old child. How come horses don't have toes? Why do we pee? Who's that? Where are we going? Me, me, Wow, me. it feels just like there? using my cell phone. Oh, not yet. Do you have a hands-free phone? No. Oh, then we have the head-to-shoulder strap. <laughs> wow. How can your head is sideways? With my head fixed to my shoulder, an incessant noise in my ear, and my eyes distracted from the reality around me, I feel just like I'm using my car phone. But I'm not racking up any air time. Hey, we better get to work, buddy. You're right. Speed up. You can't see them, but there's some people riding on bikes just up ahead. <laughs> then let's go. The cell phone substitute because you don't need technology to be a menace to society. What's menace to sobriety mean?